Well, good morning, folks, and I hope your day is going absolutely perfect. Today, we're going to try and solve those lockup torque converter shifting woes right after this. So what I'm talking about by shifting woes and your lockup torque converter is that specifically on a 700 R4, you've got to be able to choose when you want your lockup to kick in or engage. With a little bit of help from Superior Solutions, I bought this kit uh, for the 700 R4 and it's a K058 and I'll leave a link in the description box below. And basically what it does is it allows you to hook into manifold vacuum on your vehicle and tap into that lockup solenoid uh, on the transmission so that you can adjust how much vacuum it takes for that lockup to turn on. Before I installed the switch, I was basically sitting at going from a 1-2-3 shift into fourth gear and an immediate lockup. So essentially bypassing the use of fourth gear. So what this switch allows me to do is it allows me to adjust the amount of vacuum it takes to engage lockup. So I don't know specifically where mine is because I didn't put a vacuum tester on it. Although with the kit it suggests that if you need to know you can put a vacuum pump on and see where the switch kicks in. So it's very simple to hook up. So let's get under the hood and show you what it takes. So the first thing that you've got to do in order to be able to hook this up is know where your power is coming from. And what we did was we hooked up the power from the solenoid for the lockup to a switch power, which means it's only gonna get power when the engine is running. And uh, so what I did was I tapped into what I think is something to do with the heater system and or the wiper system. Let me show you. So. I basically tapped into this blue and brown wire that goes into the wiper motor and that was and that was my power source and the switch itself let me show you what the switch looks like so the switch itself is just basically a little three-way switch with a vacuum port on the end and inside that is a little allen head set screw that you can adjust uh, your vacuum so obviously the vacuum is going to go to the manifold side which is what I did right there. And I basically just took the wire that I used for power and I split it. I put two spade connectors on it and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook it up to the common and the non-common and uh, that is going to give you your switch power for your lockup. And the way that it works is if you've got your vacuum adjusted to a certain pressure, then when you step on the gas, this switch will switch off and turn off your lockup and as soon as you let off at certain vacuum it will engage so that when you're driving down the highway you're going to get lockup. So let's plug everything in and show you what it looks like. So some of you are going to ask does it matter which one goes to which? Well it does. So your switch for your vacuum is going to be on the common side and the power is going to go to non-common. So I've switched this up both ways so it really didn't matter which way the switch operated because all it's doing is operating on vacuum. If you've gone too far one way you just turn the dial the opposite way. So then we're going to hook up our vacuum and essentially you're done. I will tie this up all nice and neat and the rest is just up to you. All you've got to do is take this for a drive and get it to a speed that you're, you'd like your lockup to engage. And if it's not locking up and when you kick down on the throttle, it's not disengaging, then you take the little set screw that's provided and you turn it. I just started turning it clockwise about a quarter of a turn and then you take it for a drive. If it's not enough, you go another quarter of a turn. If it's not enough, another quarter of a turn. If it's too much, same thing. You go back the other way. Uh, you don't want to go too far. I only had to make about three stops, so about three quarters of a turn from where it came stock. And uh, now that we've got the lockup working, this thing is giving me super gas mileage. I shouldn't say super because it's not super. <laughs> In comparison to what it was, it's giving me decent gas mileage now and it performs a lot better. When it's going down the road, you're not getting that lugging and chugging and shaking feeling uh, when you give it slight throttle because even under slight throttle, the uh, lockup stays engaged, which is what you want. You don't want it coming off every, sec you know, every second you uh, let off the, the uh, throttle. So 
Uh, that's how you install it. It's very, very simple. Literally five minutes, a couple of wiring uh, connectors, and a piece of vacuum hose to your manifold uh, vacuum on your carburetor. And again, it's Superior Solutions, part number K058. Very, very easy to install. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be taking a look at my old man's 36 Dodge. He's got some new wheels, and you guys are going to want to stick around, so I'll be right back. So right now will be a good time to plug my Instagram channel or page. Uh, it's right here at Old Car Guy. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I encourage you to head on over there because we do post some behind the scenes before the videos come out. And if you uh, saw the post that I made last Tuesday, you'll know what style wheels are going on the car. Now we're going to show them to you. And uh, there's no big surprise because they are a very common wheel. Uh, very much similar to the style of the torque thrust that I have on old Dale and actually quite reminiscent of the Krager style that's already on the car in a 15 inch. Now these are the Riddler wheels. They've got the five spoke and they're chrome. They're very, very nice. They've got a very smooth finish all the way around and that lip um, just kind of rolls over so there's no wheel weights that are going to go there. They're going to be stuck on the inside. The size that we chose to go with, I say we because Dad uh, needed my help a little bit with set with the offset uh, and stuff like that, is we went with zero offset and 17 by sevens. And the reason why we wanted to go 17 by sevens, of course we went 17 by sevens in the front, uh, was because of the clearance on those fenders. Those fenders are low and they're kind of hollow on the inside, so you need to be able to turn. So 17 by sevens in the front, 17 by eights uh, in the rear. And uh, we're got, we've got some tires coming, uh, some Cooper tires coming for this thing. And uh, they should be here today and we're gonna get those mounted up for you. And then we'll kind of do the same thing that we've done with all the cars when we're putting new wheels on them is we'll just kind of do a little bit of a reveal. So uh, stay tuned and we'll show you those wheels on the car. So in case you're wondering what these are, sometimes when you get tires uh, from the warehouse, they're collapsed, they're very narrow on the inside. I ran into it with the 10 inch wides on my truck and these are going on 8 inch wide rims and they were collapsed so much that uh, it's going to take a lot of air to get them to pump up. And what we're running into trouble with with the uh, front ones over there is we've got the tire on the rim but we can't get air into it because it's seeping out around the edges. Again, sometimes you run into that. If you guys know of any suggestions on how to get a tire beaded on a rim, a low profile, Leave it in the comment section down below, but keep in mind by the time you guys watch this video, they'll already be on the car. So uh, let me know what you guys do to uh, some little tips and tricks to get the uh, tires beaded on the rim. Okay, so we've got all four tires on the new rims and normally we would have some sort of a big reveal with the car backing out and some real fancy music and you know cinematic views and all this stuff, but right now we're defeated with this car and these wheels and tires and let me let me show you the wheels and tires first and then I'll show you what's got us defeated. So there it is. There is the 36 Dodge with the 17 by 7 Rattlers up front, the 17 by 8s in the rear with Cooper Xeon tires mounted all the way around. As I alluded to, we were having issues getting the tires onto the rims. They were just fighting us all the way. But having said that, doesn't it look sharp? We'll get some more cinematic views and some rolling shots of it here later on in, in another video. But let me show you what's got us stumped today. So on a normal tire, you've got this inner lip right here, which is called the bead. And as we were putting it on, it was tearing the rubber, which is not a big deal, off the bead. But on the two rear tires, it actually bent the metal in the bead. Those tires were such a bugger to get on that we had a hard time getting them to fill with air. As we're getting ready to back the car out of the garage, the left rear tire blew off the bead. So it's sitting here flat, no air in it right now. And what's got us defeated is it's gonna be such a pain in the ass to remove the tire off the rim even if we have to replace the tire, we put a new tire on and fight with it all over again. As you can see, we've just got a cheap Atlas tire changer. There's no helper arms. 
There's no giant uh, B blasters or rollers or anything like that. So everything we do is by hand. This thing was our saving grace, this tire blaster, to blast the air in. And to the point we were almost considering using ether, like the old tractor tires. Well, we didn't even have any ether. We had brake cleaner, but it wouldn't flash quick enough uh, to work for us. Anyways, yes, the car looks good, and it will continue to look good once we get this situation figured out. But man, oh man, we've been fighting, getting four tires, 17 inch. They're not even odd, you know, real low profile tires. They just fought us the whole way. Um, normally you could do four tires in less than an hour. We've been since uh, probably 2.30 and it's now closing time, it's five o'clock. And it's like inside the shop, we had the fans going and everything, but it's uh, it's stifling. Outside, it's about, uh, I gotta do the metric to Fahrenheit calculation. Outside right now, it's probably 95 degrees. Uh, humidity is horrible, it's like 100%. And uh, so we're sweating like pigs. We're trying to uh, get this done. And of course, it doesn't take much when you're hot uh, to get frustrated. So anyways. Anyways, there's the car with the new wheels and tires. Everything looks good on this side. So this is the side that we're gonna focus on and show you. I hope you guys really enjoyed waiting for these new wheels and tires to show up. Uh, having said that, we'll be right back to close out this video. So as I hop into my air-conditioned truck and head home, I want to remind you guys that uh, I'm putting the call out there to submit your ride uh, one more time because I only got two submissions and uh, you guys know who you are. I want to make sure that I can put together at least a good solid 10 to 12 minute video and where I limited it on a two minute excerpt from what you have, uh, I need at least six of you to uh, put your videos of your rides together. So I hope that you can do your part and help fulfill the submit your ride challenge and do that. My information is in the description box down below and I hope that you guys can help take part. With all that being said guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. And don't forget, the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is coming up really quick with the season four premiere and we've got some awesome guests lined up for you. We'll see you soon.